Music can be defined as organized sound separate from noise. But for most of us, music is the art form that connects with our minds in such a way that it elicits excitement, wonder, and emotion. I am a classical music conductor and composer working in both traditional and unconventional interdisciplinary presentations. We conductors are trained to take the musical score as a kind of a sacred text where the composer has embedded a message. Musicologists will tell you that even music without text will have ideas and knowledge from the time and place of the composer. We also have a community of listeners on the other side of this equation. The listeners in a receptive mode will accept the message of the composer. But I have become persuaded over time that the mind is not only a passive recipient of music. The mind under certain circumstances will transform the content of the music in the manner that the mind sees fit. The reasons for this are interesting, and we will discuss them a little bit today. Consider a situation that probably all of us have experienced. You are in traffic, and it's raining, and you're a little bit distracted, and suddenly on the radio there emerges a familiar old song, and you are crying because you remember an old love. Now, the song may be about love, or the song may be not about love at all, but it still gets you. And what is happening there is that your mind is projecting associations onto the music. Consider another situation that may appear to be unrelated. When my students leave to meet the professional world, they are going to encounter people waging cultural wars. Some people hold very extreme views about popular music. Even though today it's very cool to be discerning about different styles, these more extreme people will say that popular music does not have the transcendent discourse to appear in the concert hall or in the high church. Of course, the retort will be that classical music is a fossilized art form that belongs to the elite of another era and that it will lose its audience in a decade or so. In fact, statistics do demonstrate that symphony concerts are attended mostly by people over 50 years old and that the younger generations do not attend frequently. The Chicago Symphony is exploring a new alternative and that is they are tying the concert to the club scene that is very appealing to the upscale urbanites in the city and it seems to be working. So, what do we learn about this? Uh, statistics suggest a little bit of something, but these cases, in fact, are apparently only dissimilar in one sense, in the way they manifest. At the bottom of it, they can be analyzed from the analysis of context and perception. Some people will identify or fail to identify with a particular kind of music. It is important for us musical artists to figure out why this is the case. Those who love classical music will apply to it all the merits that you see here. Mostly, they consider it to connect with the divine or the universal. And sometimes the discourse is very long. By contrast, classical music offers entertainment, the joy of dancing, connecting with our friends and with the community. And this it does with short songs. It is very immediate. The truth is, however, that classical music has come to us over centuries and generations of listeners who thought it was wonderful enough to hold on to it, even though it may not have connected with their particular cultural context. It may have come from the aristocracy or the high church at some point in time, but I am not an aristocrat. Last time I checked, I was not a bishop, and I still love it. So, instead, think, consider the case of popular music. If the songs of John Lennon, for example, who died 24 years ago, are still played 100 years from now, wouldn't those songs become the classical music of our great-grandchildren? For all extents and purposes, both Mozart and John Lennon have transcended their time and place. 
So consider then that the, we develop this predilection for one style or the other at a particular time in our lives, and that was in our teenage years. Indeed, some studies have suggested that when we are teenagers, we are living very vivid and significant life transitions. Those life transitions sometimes depend on aspirations we have of identity and independence. And more often than not, they will imply also either conflict with our parents or other authority figures or the emergence of a first great love. In short, the emotional context is very intense and therefore the music we encounter at the time will become branded forever as the soundtrack of our lives. Now, if classical music was played at home or if we are teenagers invested in classical music, also Bach and Beethoven will be emotional, emotionally branded. As an artist working with a variety of musical materials, it is very easy for me to say that classical music can become emotionally immediate. What is always not so difficult, or not actually not easy, is to think of popular music as able to connect with deep emotional and spiritual content with some listeners. If that is the case, then popular music can be artistic. Why should this be so? then the conclusion is that the art in the music is what we discover in it and the content and meaning of the music is what we attribute to it. Now, this may surprise you because in our Western culture we value the solo creative artist above all others. It has just been recently discussed. The work of a composer, although awesome, is not self-sufficient, however. It may depend on dialogue with an artistic partner or even the wife. Instead, we see musical composition as inherently mysterious. We have this romantic notion of the composer at his piano. It's usually a he in the mythology, of course. Or the composer is walking the woods of Germany and Austria, taking notes for music. Of course, Germany is good in the mythology. Brazil is not good in the mythology. <laughs> we see the composer also writing and so gets the mystique of the author. A Beethoven symphony is equivalent to a Tolstoy novel. But classical music, as it is tied to notation, then what do we say about rock bands? Rock bands develop their material through debate and negotiation. Isn't that another form of composition? So the truth is that musical composition cannot fulfill its creative cycle in a vacuum. Ask yourself, where does the music actually take place? Doesn't it take place when it is heard? So the end of the cycle of musical creativity is in your mind. For this to truly happen, the listener has to be co-creative by entering into a game of associations with the music. But as our society changes and we're pulled in so many different directions, what common associations are those going to be? So, if the context around the music will affect our perceptions, it is up for us musicians to develop some conducive contexts by designing rituals around the performance of music. The ritual would be the context that encourages the mind to become co-creative. A ritual is an external event, of course, but it creates a theatrical frame around a set of actions, and in so doing, the ritual affects your cognitive ordering of the world. This TED talk already has several ritualized components, but rituals are everywhere. One of the techniques used in ritual is to design the space and then place the events in it, surrounding the audience. Look at these simple wedding layouts. They symbolize the joining of the two families through the love of the couple at the center. By placing actions in a theater-like space, a ritual crystallizes values and ideas and emotions. This is not the same, but is quite parallel to the branding and crystallization that happened in our younger years. So if a classical concert is a ritual, why would it lose its power? Rituals do not retain their power in perpetuity. They must represent the values of the society of the present, or even better, they must represent the aspirations of the society going forward. So my solution to the supposed crisis of classical music would be 
to break down the 19th century model that emerged during the Industrial Revolution, consolidated in the 19th century, and we still have it today. We are now a visual society, a very global society. This is a digital era and therefore digital media and digital technology should be part of the concert presentation. So what could possibly be the models? Rock concerts, visual arts, film, experimental theatre, all these things can provide some models and they are ahead of musicians in this exploration. No matter the look and the tools, however, the element of ritual that is the most important is the interactive behavior and participation of the audience. Therefore, for me, a model that I like very much is the sacred music drama, reconsidered with digital tools to explore the social concerns of our time. I also fantasize about a holodeck. Remember Star Trek? a holodeck where we could be surrounded by our choice of images and music. I hope this is being built somewhere as we speak. <laughs> so that, take could, that could take many shapes then of our experience through the holodeck. The objective is to penetrate the ritual and in so doing penetrate our own mind space and actively layer the music with associations. So I will offer you an example in the case of a work, an installation by Canadian living artist Janet Cardiff. She worked with a motet by a Renaissance composer, Thomas Tallis. You will hear the music in its conventional direct listening format. You will see a little bit of the score. But then, soon after, we will see a little bit of the penetrable installation. What takes place is that then the spectator is able to either stand by a loudspeaker and hear the vulnerable voice of one singer, or move back and hear a glorious collective sound. <laughs> The great paradox is that after an experience like this, you would be tempted to go listen to the music on its own, which means that any ritual I may design is only the beginning of a process that will continue with your mind. We have a choice, you know, to have music only as a very pleasant wallpaper, but it is even better to enter the music and make your own personal music, transforming water into wine. Thank you.